Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Par the Collector. What's up, everybody? Uh, sorry about, you know, not being consistent with episodes, starting a new job, our schedules are fucked up. Yeah, you're on nights, I'm on days. Yeah, and I'm sorry about me. I am have a sinus infection, but I'm still trying to do this, so it might sound a little uh, froggy. I appreciate you powering through it for me. Hell yeah. yeah. So... Tell me how much you love Psycho Gore, man. I gotta tell you, man, I had a lot of emotions watching this movie, dude. <laughs> like, I, it's like watching a rated R episode of fucking Power Rangers. Yes. Like, it was just redonkulous. So much, so much going on. Mm-hmm. So much going on. Uh, I like the premise of it. I, I really did, man. I love the premise of it. The first thing. 35 minutes of this movie mm-hmm. i'm in there dude i'm locked in i'm loving it yeah and i don't know it's about like i said it's about 40 minutes it takes a fucking turn dude. yeah and it goes the fucking left you know it goes the leftsville <laughs> yeah and it doesn't come back it, it gets ridiculous it like it's r- so fucking ridiculous and it's it's laughing it's some of it is just like silly funny right like i did i did laugh at this shit a bunch like but uh <laughs> It was just so weird, dude. It was such a crazy ass movie. Uh, the director, um, Stephen Kaczynski. Yeah, that guy's done a lot of acid. Like, <laughs> right. So I was watching an interview with him, and he said one of his friends friends just wanted to fund a movie, and he just happened to be the guy that wanted to do it. So he's like, so I got to do what I wanted to do. So I wrote a crazy ass fucking premise of like, um, those family comedies. Mm-hmm. and like sci-fi you know horror and kind of just like threw them together and see what happened i thought you loved it so much because the dad's name was greg oh my god Dude. can we can we get past the fucking <laughs> the fucking trope of greg's being assholes like greg is never a nice good guy in i a thought movie. the dad was honestly one of the better parts of the movie oh he was amazing but he he's fucking cracked me up dude he's fucking he's the lazy dad and it pisses me off like why does he I don't know. When he just, high fives his ass and breaks his fucking forearm and right. dude, I fucking about lost it. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> so what is this movie about? Um, you know, millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these uh super like uh it's it's kind of weird the parallels of religion in this movie too. Yeah. Um, but these like they look like space angels Mm -hmm. i would would, you know like kind of like knights right um or like a power rangers villain that they spray painted white yeah uh also got a little overwatch vibe in there too like (laughs) but uh anyways it's like a council of they're telling you that you get the nice scroll and they narrate the scroll which is always good for people that can't read it has a lot more like um depth when it comes to like the story than you would think yeah. Like, there's a whole backstory. Oh, dude, the or- that's why I said the first 35 minutes of it, I was like, wow, this is like, okay. Like, all right. Right. Because it's got, a, like, a cool... It's kind of like the alien version of My Bodyguard. Mm-hmm. That's how I got, I got that off it. Because it's like, you have these two kids, the brother and sister, and they uh, the little sister is a beast, and she bullies the brother, like, quite a bit. And they play this game, this made-up game called Crazy Ball. Right. And the little sister like beats his ass at it every time. Um, I was gonna ask you, what did you think of the little girl? I thought she did a great job, like uh, as far as like acting. Yeah. Um, it's a. I don't know how old she was when she when this movie, or I don't know how old she's supposed to be. Mm. But very intelligent, but um, crazy as shit. Yeah. Like some people find her annoying and hard to watch because of her. Cause like they feel she's too much. I don't know if you would have found a better kid. Like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. I don't know if a, a a better a kid actor would have done any better in this movie. Like it's just so fucking ridiculous. I don't think it would have mattered who it was. Right. Like Drew Barrymore could have been like 12 and in this movie, and you'd still be like, "What the fuck are we watching?" <laughs> but like, anyways, they they're playing in the backyard, and he wins. A lot of dark humor too. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Dude, they fucking murdered like six kids in this fucking movie. Right. Like, couple bums drug dealer yeah no, it's rated r for a reason yeah it's really rated r dude and it's funny because uh it's called pg yeah psycho gourmet yeah uh, that, it's a yeah. funny little tidbit 
So anyways, the brother pretty much follows his sister around, does does whatever she wants to do because she, he can never win the game. Right. She has him dig this like 12 foot hole so she can bury him alive. And he's just like, <laughs> like, oh man, what are you burying me alive for? And he's like digging the fucking hole. <laughs> right. He's like a foot taller than her. He could probably beat her ass if he wanted to, but you can go along. You go along with it just for the, uh, you know, for the viewing. Yeah, yeah right. I didn't take the movie very seriously. Like I said, like I did at first. Like I was like, oh shit, this might be like one of those movies that I was like, how did I not know about this? Because mm-hmm. so, I like the, like I said, I love the premise of it. Like it's an ancient warrior. But anyways, he's like a he he's an evil dude. Yeah, that's how they paint him in the beginning. That he's just like this massive like space uh, Attila the Hun. Yeah, like he's just he run, just goes to go worlds and takes the a planet, right. fucking runs through shit, and then keeps it moving. Exactly. He's like um, a Thanos. So these like uh, angel Overwatch people um, defeat him and put him in like a, a space casket, and they send him millions of light years away which of course it's always earth yeah always, always earth. they always land on earth <laughs> and uh he has this fucking gym that's embedded in his chest that like gives him all this power and like he turns him into thanos pretty much He's yeah got, like an infinity stone right in inside of him um when they put him in the casket also don't understand why you would do this they put the fucking stone that helps him take over the world uh on the, on casket. the casket, yeah, right. And it's like it's such a complex code; no one will ever release the gem from the casket. She's just like eeny meeny miny fucking mo, and then just <laughs> still thought it was cool. I was like, all right, so they're still going with the kid vibe too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's really what I pictured was like a like a Deadpool kind of like she's got this like badass space Spartan, and she's just gonna go around fucking up her bullies and like you know robbers and stuff like that in town. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this could be a cool movie, you right? Know? And then it did not end up going that way <laughs> at, at all. Um, the brother has a friend that she has a crush on, and he's not fucking with the vibes because, you know, he's a little kid and he's obviously not interested in girls yet. So uh, she gets the the space monster, Psycho Gorman. Mm-hmm. I did love that part. The guy that played him, he did a fucking great job. Oh, he did amazing. He was and, so perfect. Uh, he, uh, he captures it because, like, every time he speaks, it's like, I'm going to bathe in your fucking blood. And yeah, like, right. It's just like this terrible shit he's saying to children. And like, it's hilarious, though. But like I said, a lot of dark humor. If you're not a fan of dark humor, you're not going to enjoy this movie at all. Right. But uh, like I said, I had fun with it. Uh, I watched it, but they end up, uh, she ends up locking the, the gym and then uh, they come out and like she, they, they hear about a monster being on the loose. Obviously, they think it's the one they dug up in their yard. Cause she kept the gym and then they just, which by the way, they filled in that fucking 12 foot hole really fast. Right. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Um, but anyways, he climbs out of it cause he's a fucking space beast and, uh, he goes and just murders the shit out of a drug dealer and some bums. Oh yeah. Cause they, uh, <laughs> stole like a car radio or some shit or broke into a house. Yeah. Right. He's like, it's a really nice frame. He was really upset about it. It was like him and his wife. Yeah, and I love that it, like, does the gore, like, right off the bat. Like, just fucking... Yeah, he takes the fucking bum's head clean, like, clean off, just fucking... Both of them, actually, at the same time. Yeah. Just grabs them. Maybe in a couple millennium, your yeah. skin will be a, a hard thing, but not now. And, he's looking <laughs> cool. um, and the other dude, dude, he fucked him up. He did. He's like, I don't want to die. He's like, then live forever. Creates, like, a stone where his eyes just keep rolling in the back of his head. He's like, it's an eternity of torture. <sighs> Which is brutal. Yeah, right. And uh, he's getting ready to do it to the kids, but they figure out that because she's got the gym, Mm -hmm. they control him. Yeah. So it's pretty much like giving a child the power of uh, uh, like a god, like pretty much like he uh, he's a bad motherfucker. He's got spikes and shit coming out of him. He can use magic and he's it's just crazy. Like as you go through the movie, it comes up with like more and more shit that he's able to do. Yeah. But uh there was some pretty funny shit in it. Um, she's like, pick up my brother and spin him. <laughs> he's like, it fucking hurts. It hurts. And she like, he finally puts him down. And he's like throwing up. It's pretty funny. Uh, they go through, there's like a crazy montage where they're like trying to bond with him. And every time that like, he goes into like his origin story or any kind of like battle. Oh my God. She'll cut him off like immediately. Right. Like it's a really epic story. Like I remember on the battle of the bridge of souls where I single handedly anyways. So we're going to go to the mall. And <laughs> yeah. We're going to do karaoke. And then we're going to do this and that. 
and they put him in people clothes and shit. It's it's pretty hilarious. Or, and when he did his uh his full backstory, where you actually like learned yeah, about him in the yeah. gym, and then after he was done, she's like, "Well, that was boring. I'm yeah. gonna go fucking." <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny too. And if you look around, like there's like nothing but candy wrappers and shit. Like the story took forever. Yeah, they, yeah. they like to brought all this food to like last hours, and they ate it all in ten minutes because because <laughs> it, it took them that long. I thought right. that was funny. And uh, he's like, it was nice meeting you, Psycho Gorman. He's like, I hope you die. <laughs> <laughs> it would be better if you were dead. <laughs> That's what it was. Uh, okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> then she turns him into a fucking brain. Yeah. With legs, which I thought. And that's where I was like, all right, go. This movie is supposed to be silly. Yeah. Is, is that when you get it? Dude, I swear, like the first 35 minutes, I'm like, okay, well, there there could be like a decent like action movie in this or something. You mm-hmm. know? Low budget sci fi type of deal, right? Because uh, the suits and stuff were pretty, pretty good, you know. For I'm sure the the, uh, the director is like a costume designer. That's like what he does. That's why everything looked so good. You could definitely tell these people come from a horror background. Like oh, a, definitely like a cult horror background. Have you ever but, seen The Abyss? Yeah, he did that. Oh shit, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I like. That I haven't one. seen it, but I just know he did it. Oh, that's a that's a good one. I think James Cameron directed that. Oh yeah, I think so. It's a good one though. Mm. Yeah, a lot of big timers in that one. All right. I need to watch it. I think I own it. If I do, I'll put it on the list for you. Hell yeah. Shit, I haven't watched it in fucking probably 10 years. My dad loved that movie. Like, every time that movie came on, my dad would go, watch the fucking abyss. <laughs> really? Watch this. Some people do love that fucking movie. Dude, my dad was one of them. Yeah. Like, he's like, this movie didn't make a lot of money, but it's a great fucking movie. You yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he loves the abyss. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the, like I said, there's a pretty much and dude, uh, they're walking through town with him, and some kid on a bike's like, "Nice Halloween hat costume, asshole!" <laughs> he fucking snaps his fingers and like blows the kid up, right? Um, and then obviously, the longer he's been alive, he calls his minions. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, I thought that was really cool how he puts his hand on the TV. He's like, "Energy comes out of this device." Oh, and he talks He's to like, the, uh, yeah. I might be able to reach my people. And he puts his hand on the TV and the TV just like starts dying pretty much. It starts bleeding. Yeah, and right. Shit. I was like, that's fucking cool. Like, I could have used some more of that, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I just thought it would have been a lot better movie if it had just been her like trying to like be some kind of like a fucking vigilante or something. Like just her and the monster like showing up at like a, a, a hostage situation or something. I mean, yeah, if that was the kind of movie it was going for, but I, it's like dumb humor. Like, that's the thing is it like could have, it sets itself up to do something like that, but it doesn't. It undercuts all of it just to be a dumb movie about kids with all this power and don't do anything with it. Like, I think it's it kind of like a joke. I thought it would have been a better, I thought it, I thought it could have been better. Yeah. Yeah. You really didn't love it. I, I didn't love it. I thought, like I said, it was funny in some parts. Like I, I, there was some parts where I was laughing a good bit, but, um, like overall, mm-hmm. like it, I felt like it lied cause some of it was just like pointless, silly. Yeah. I felt like, I don't know. Yeah. My, uh, I heard about this movie on one of my reviewers and I was like, I watched the trailer for it. And I was like, this can either be amazing or really dumb. So I invited my brother over. I'm like, hey, come watch this dumbass fucking movie with me. I could not stop laughing. I laughed so much during this fucking movie. The Like I said, the, the funniest it was uh, more of the stuff just within the family dynamic. The mm. brother versus the sister and the mom versus the dad. The oh, my point. God. It's hilarious. Like at the beginning of the movie, like you think they're just like like normal backup characters. And then by the end of the movie, they're like fully involved in the plot. And it's yeah. fucking the best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she I, turns into like this fucking half cyborg Overwatch chick. And he's like, I'll still fucking forgive you if you stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, child, give her the fucking gym. He's like, great parenting. Wish I could help, but uh, I'm lazy. I'm lazy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Greg. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. I love the dad. So good. The, the dad was great. Like, he trashes the kitchen making them dinner. And she's like. Oh, he trashes the microwave. And she's like, you fucked up the microwave. He's like, I made dinner. You're welcome. And starts crying. <laughs> Taking care of my family. Or feeding my family or some shit like that. It was hilarious. I bought a new TV. And I took a couple weeks off work, so you're going to want to pick up some extra shit. To pay for this TV? <laughs> Definitely sounds like some shit you would say. That was hilarious, bro. Yeah, I ain't saying it lately. I got to wait till it gets taken care of, but... 
But yeah, I, uh, dude, I put out with that last video, the the haul, the DVD one. Yeah. Motherfucker's got 20, like 30 views, bro. Yeah. They're not all hits. They're not all. Oh, speaking of views, have you seen Guyver lately? Guyver? The, the one on YouTube? 800 views. Fuck you, On dude. Guyver. Really? Yeah. I did not even notice that, dude. It's been fucking going up for some reason. <laughs> it hit some kind of fucking <laughs> algorithm. And Guyver's just been taking off. That is awesome, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, I fucking, I trashed that movie. Oh, yeah. You did. People's, like, favorite childhood movie. I was just like, yeah, this movie's a fucking shit Piece show. Shit. It's a shit show, dude. Yeah, right. Costumes are cool, but that's about it. Dude, it really was, though. Like, the poor Jimmy. Like, <laughs> poor Jimmy Walker and poor Mark Hamill. Rewatching it, I realize how bad it is, but that nostalgia still has me. Right. That, like I said, if I'd have seen it as a kid, it might have stood a chance. But like watching that movie as a grown man, yeah, it's like wow, this movie is bad. It's kind of like Psycho Gourmet, <laughs> like in the in the gross factor in some parts, yeah, for sure. But... Well, I just mean the costume design and everything like that. But honestly, if I would seen Psycho Gourmet as a kid, I would watch this movie obsessively. Really? Yeah, I love this. I'm probably gonna obsessively watch this as an adult. So, well, I mean, you own it, so you can watch it all you want, right? Uh, I, I like I said, I had a couple of good laughs, but uh, they send the uh, the angel overlord, overlord mm-hmm. lady, and then you find out through the backstory that he's actually not. He didn't start off as a terrible bad guy. Well, he was enslaved by right by those people, yeah. by the angel people, right. and um, they made them build their big old churches on their planet. Well, he ended up finding an ancient like gem that his people had made, you know, mm-hmm. and he absorbed it. And became this bad motherfucker, but he, the power was so great that like it turned him into a psychopath. Yeah, and he didn't just stop at taking over his world. He took over like a bunch of worlds, you know. Yeah, and then that's when they all got together and figured out a way to, in in case him in that. Yep, all of his people had like pretty much like surrendered and worked with them. They he said we run the fifth moon of this planet. He's like, that's nothing. That's pathetic. I know. And when they come back, they're like, they want to keep him away because they're like, now we get to share the power. <laughs> you crowd's stupid. <laughs> that was a good part too. It was a lot of uh, like I said. It reminded me a lot of like a rated R Power Rangers episode. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Especially the last like twenty minutes or so. Yeah, definitely feels like a rated R Power Ranger movie for sure. Um. I have to say, I called the fucking, I called the damn uh, crazy ball for the finale. Oh, did you? Because, like, you know, he's all fucked up and, you know, of course he can't fight the badass. Yeah. So he's just like, Millie, you get to choose the game. And I'm like, oh, we're playing crazy ball for the world. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's very predictable. Like, you knew he wasn't going to fucking kill him, especially right. after he got to kill the other lady and mm-hmm. she gave him his power back and shit. Like you just knew that he was gonna, he was gonna let him live, and it, I thought that was pretty funny. Like after he eats that, he gives her the warrior's death. I thought, oh yeah, good. when he eats the, the warrior's death, is eating them. Yeah, and his mouth gets all huge, like fucking alien and shit, or predator or whatever. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but it, he's like, I just want to tell you that the real, the real power is love. I don't need the stone anymore, and he gives it to her as like a souvenir, you know, to come back and visit him and shit. And uh, he's like, I'm going to go kill a bunch of people now. And he like opens up a portal and just starts blowing shit up. And the dad's like, I think we learned a lot of lessons today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. forearms hanging on by like a fucking thread. And the mom's like, what did we learn? He's like, um. <laughs> hey, you want to go to the hospital? Let's go to the hospital. Right. <laughs> he's like about to pass out. The dad was by far the funniest shit, dude. Oh, definitely. Honey, you know, sometimes... You know, I'm not a great dad, and, you know, I know I'm lazy, but uh, I got some dad advice for you. Maybe you should give your monster friend the gym so <laughs> the world doesn't get destroyed. Right. He, like, compared it to something so stupid, but it was hilarious, like, the comparison. I forgot what he was comparing it to. Oh, God, I don't even remember either. But it was so fucking funny how he was just trying to relate the two. It's yeah. Just like, wow, thanks, Dad. And then uh, she goes in and, does, like, has this crazy... Like, you think she's about to pray? She's like, you know what, God? Don't even worry about it. I know I'm wearing the zebra print. Breaks the cross. Oh, that was a little crazy. I was yeah, like, right. All right, we're getting into some uh, some touchy shit right here. But um, other than that, I thought all the jokes were in good good fun. You know, uh, 
I didn't hate the movie by any means. Uh, mm-hmm. I would watch it again. Yeah. It's a fun, stupid movie. Right. Uh, and that's all it's trying to be. It's just trying to be fun. Yeah. Just silly fun. And uh, I like the last scene where the, the, the kid they turned into the brain with arms. Oh, right. He's eating <laughs> he's fucking just salad. Eating dinner and shit. Like, yeah, that's one of the funny jokes is nobody acknowledges that he's a fucking huge brain. They just kind of go with it. Do you ever think I'll be back to normal? No. I don't know. Probably not. But I like you just the way you are. Oh, another funny is the cop. When he turns the cop into oh, this like dude. zombie guy. I'm glad you brought that up because I thought that was fucking hilarious. He's like, please kill me. Like <laughs> the first time I watched it, it was like, eh, whatever. But the second time I watched it, fucking hilarious. Oh, I picked up. On that was that one movie. of my favorite parts of the movie was the fucking cop. I found another hollow husk of human meat for your game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Melts the dude. No, I'm your master now. Yeah. yeah that was pretty funny. You call yourself a defender of this earth <laughs> or of this planet or something like that. Yeah. Um, like I said, it, it was, you know, it had a great backstory. Like I said, I would have, if they would have took it more serious, I think it could have been a better movie. Personally. <laughs> I, I think it's perfect the way it is. I love every inch of this movie. Because they like, I don't know, man. I felt like they waited a little bit into it before they were like letting you know like hey by the way we're in on the joke like we don't care and i kind of i don't know i guess i felt i didn't think out the gate that this was going to be like a you know like a silly slapstick kind of movie i didn't i thought i told you i couldn't remember i thought i told you it was a comedy i was well, like hey, i'm gonna I mean, give just you the premise of it when you explained it to me i knew it was going to be crazy yeah but like I don't know, like you didn't make it seem like it was gonna be like a spoof type of deal, right? Like, yeah, I guess you're right. Spoof, but like I said, I didn't dis. You know, it's not like I didn't enjoy it, right? I don't know, it was a good watch, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really have much else to add to it other than the fact that you know, for what I don't know how much it cost to make it, but I thought they did. Oh, a good like one point five, I think. Like it was a small budget. They put their money to where it where it needed. Oh yeah, to he 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 stretched that budget far because it i think the monsters look great like he's really good talented at his costume design yeah i thought that was probably one of the cooler parts was it kind of throw me back to my childhood like Mm -hmm. i was like man you know i remember when this was like all we had right exactly this was the best this was cutting edge you know and i love that people are still keeping that like essence alive like it's not all cgi I honestly, bro, if it wasn't for, you know, independent movies and stuff, like, they would be dead. Yeah. Know, because, like, they they can't afford the, the James Cameron and Zack Snyder CGI people and shit. <laughs> right. Where you can literally make anything happen in a scene and not even need everybody there and all that other shit. Like, mm-hmm. It was really crazy how they, uh, how he showed how they shot certain scenes and they didn't even have people for them. I know, right? It's pretty crazy when I see back behind the scene, like CGI thing. It's like somebody just standing on a green screen. It's like, oh, you CGI'd all of that? That is insane. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like 300. 300 is pretty much all CGI. I know. It's just the fucking guys. Fucking Sin City. Yeah. When they, when they, even the way they redid that, the dark side, they removed Steppenwolf, put dark side in, and then added all that shit. Like, that's just fucking nuts. It is pretty, and some serious, like, talent. And to make it look like it's it's real as shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Um, My hat's off to those people. I know, right? They're really talented, and they put in the fucking work. But the thing is, is, like, everyone has their job. Like, it's not like one person makes Steppenwolf. It's like one person does the motion capture, right. another person does the, like, everything, and then somebody puts the final touches. Like, it's a lot of people working on Oh, I know. It's like parts. teams of shit, yeah. yeah. That's why those credits are so damn long. I know, right? Because you have to put the 400 people that, that worked on one guy. Yeah, exactly. So what do you uh, rate Psycho Gore, man? I had the number in my head on the way over, and I was like, yeah, he ain't gonna like that number. So... I mean, it's not my number. I don't care. You could give it a one. I don't give a shit. I love this movie. It's not gonna stop me from loving this movie. I was gonna go 6.5. I was going to go 6.5, but I was like, he's going to give me shit about 6.5 because I live in there. (laughs) So I'm going 6.7. 6.7? I'm going 6.7, man. (laughs) Yeah. It wasn't quite good enough for a 7 for me, but... Uh, I give it a highly recommended, like, please, if you have not watched this movie, please watch it. Do yourself a favor. Yeah, that's how I go, man. Like, if a 7 or better, I would recommend it to watch it. Mm -hmm. Uh, 6.7... Certain people I would recommend it to watch, like, if this was up their alley. You know True. I, mean? I would tell them. Well, 
that's what I hear is like it's very like niche comedy because it's a spoof of a very like niche genre. But mm. I feel the jokes are there that anybody can really enjoy it. Like even if you don't get the the genre. Yeah, I mean I'm not like a huge sci fi guy. Right. But like I still have a good time watching it. Like I said, like if I knew it was somebody that enjoyed obscure comedies or yeah. you know, something like that, movies like that, I would tell them about it. True. I love I love this movie. I'll probably watch it a few more times. But if they leaned more towards like action drama type deal, I would be like, nah, dude, this is probably not for you. Right. But yeah, six seven. Feel pretty good about that. Yeah, that's fair. So, since we didn't do an episode last week, I figured we could do a double review this week, because the next movie we're going to talk about, I don't have that much to say about it. Yeah, this so, this new movie, bro, Yeah, this, this next movie we're about to talk about, bro, that's how you do a fucking monster movie, bro. Eh. That's how you do a fucking monster movie. Yeah. Fuck the plot, fuck all that. Give me two titans scrubbing it out in a fucking city, bro. Yeah, so Kong versus Godzilla. Kong versus Godzilla, bro. You gotta put some fucking stank on it when you say it, man. It's <laughs> fucking like I said. Uh, the, 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 I actually liked Godzilla two better. I thought King of the Monsters was a better movie. Agreed. That's uh, my favorite out of this whole like franchise. Is better, um, better plot, better involvement with the humans. Like the humans right. actually served a better purpose in the second movie. The third one, we're kind of fucking ourselves mm. for some reason. Like because you know machines have always proven that they're not gonna take over. Yeah, or anything, and they put the brain of the fucking Ch- uh, Chidora in the fucking Mecha Godzilla. I did like the Mecha Godzilla. I love that you're just jumping right in for it, like going for it. Well, you know how I feel when we do the new movies, bro. I just talk about the shit that I like because so many people do reviews on the on the newer movies that yeah. like I'm just gonna say how I feel about it. Yeah, I went into it pretty cold. I didn't know a whole lot about it. I stayed away from reviews. Like, I watched the trailer, but yeah, that's about it. I didn't get a chance to watch it until it was already out for like four days, and my YouTube f- feed was fucking littered with spoilers and this. Exactly, and so I had to stay away from all that. But when Mecha Godzilla did like show up on screen, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, They're the going kid for in, it. The kid in me was like, all right, that's what's up. Same. Man. I fuck with that. And the, the tail thing I thought was a cool addition. Um I didn't like the whole like under earth type shit, like with the whole the center of the earth with Kong. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess they had to have somewhere for him to go Yeah, because I knew that this is how this movie, was. I didn't know how they were going to do it, but I figured I'm like, they're not going to fucking kill them off. One of them off. Like they're both too big a cash grab, like cash cows. They're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. They got to find a way that they could somehow not team up, but team up. And I thought Mecha Godzilla was a good fill for that. Yeah. Cause that was really the only big time monster we hadn't seen yet from all the movies like because like i said godzilla 2 they pulled out all the fucking stops like they planned on they were like man we're never gonna get to make a godzilla 3 so we're just gonna blow our load right right now. yeah and you got Chidora, you got mothra you got fucking rodan you got so many gray monsters in that second one that like who do you have left who's to, left yeah who right. do you have to, other than kong versus godzilla you got nothing mm-hmm. you know and i did like the fact that kong's ancestors were like the original protectors and he killed Godzilla, you know, the original Godzilla. And uh, I also like the fact that Godzilla beat the fuck out of Kong and, like, made him, like, say, like, make it made him flinch. Like, fucking who's the boss? <laughs> you know, but didn't kill him. Right. And then they ended up working together. But, like, when he fucking charges up his, his battle axe, dude, that was dope. And they fucking... I thought it was pretty smart the way they did it is, like, the first fight, it was Kong on a ship. You know, Godzilla has, you know, the advantage, home advantage. And then the second fight, Kong beat the fuck out of him, beat the fuck out of him. And then like this, the third one is that's when you do whatever. I like that. They did that. The the monster fighting. I'm 100 percent on board. I love it. Right. Gave me everything that I wanted. Human aspect. And like the story, yeah, I didn't like, like the lacking. fucking Dosaki's guy being the villain. Like I didn't, I didn't like that, right? Because uh, that's what I like in my head. That's who I kept thinking the whole time. Like I don't always get drink, you know. I don't always drink beer, but <laughs> when I do, I take over Godzilla's mind, right? I but I, I just hated how the um, human characters were just driving the plot. Mm. They didn't have like involvement with the plot. It yeah. just didn't. And feel I, as good as the second one. I forget the guy's name, but the guy that was like the the dad from the second one, who was like one of the bigger characters in the second movie. It barely in this one, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's like barely in it, and like his daughter, like they just found a way to keep her involved. You know. I did think the guy from Atlanta did a good job. Yeah, uh, I think so too. He did. He he did really good. Um, 
the mom was wasted, mm-hmm. you know, though she was big in the second one. And the lady that was taking care of Kong in this one, I didn't really like her. Yeah, and the the little friend sidekick person was just like there. Dude, you know when I realized that when I was watching that movie though, that like that kid's only good in Deadpool too, like and barely in that. Oh yeah, yeah. That I guess you're right. That's, that's true. That's who he is. Though. Like that's Firefist. <laughs> he Firefisted this movie, man. I don't know, man. He's from New Zealand. Is he? Yeah. What's a weird fact? Yeah, he's overweight. I don't know why you know that. <laughs> I am too. I don't know why I said that. Anyways, uh, but yeah, that, like I said, man. I, they left it open, of course, for like a whole nother way to go about it. And yeah. Now they're like mining the fucking energy. And I don't know. Chidora might come back. I don't know. Like they could, they could go anywhere they want. Yeah, they can go it. anywhere. I do love that. They just kind of went for it. Like, that's what I love about it is it was a huge blockbuster. I wish I would have seen this in theater, by the way. Yeah, I know. I this was is definitely, I, a I wanted to movie. go to the movie, but like, I just didn't have the time. Right. So, HBO Max, bro, they're hooking you up in 2020. Right. 2021, I mean. And they're they're earning their subscription. Dude, honestly, though, like... Unlike Disney, which I'm fucking about to cancel. Dude, Disney has some balls on them, bro. Like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, we'll give you you the movie at home. Yeah, 30 bucks. Right, exactly. That Raya movie, I heard it sucked ass, and they probably made 12 mil off of that bitch, just mm -hmm. fucking selling it to people who got kids that are like, it's like a Mulan. It's not Mulan, though. It's not. Yeah. It's Raya. Yeah, exactly. I I just Disney has been missing for me because they're so fucking greedy, bro. They are the same reason why they won't release fucking Black Widow, like because they can't go and get their fucking. It won't be the four hundredth Marvel MCU movie that went to a billion dollars. That's the only reason they won't fucking release that shit. Mm-hmm. But Warner Brothers and DC and all them are like, motherfucker, we'll take four hundred million. We'll we'll take five hundred million. Like it ain't a bill, but we'll take it. Like Snyder Cut has probably made them more money than they'll ever admit to. Like they talk about it's not a good idea. Warner Brothers has no interest in doing a sequel. Like that shit saved y'all's fucking service, man. Oh, one hundred percent. I think so too. Saved HBO Max, bro. But now they're putting out some pretty decent. Yeah, now they got shows going, but they wouldn't have even looked at it if you don't put the Snyder Cut out, man. That puts so much attention on HBO Max. Yeah, it was definitely a smart move on their on their part because. I think a lot of people sign up for HBO for it and now just kind of like keep it. And now they're starting to put out some decent movies. And if so. it's, and if it's paying for it and, and, and bringing you longevity, mm-hmm. then like, why not do it, do a second one? Even if it's only on there, do right. it as another fucking series where we get to watch an hour of it a week for a month. I'm yeah. fine with that. Same. You know, is it going to be tricky? Yeah. Cause you got to pay fucking big time actors, shit tons of money to come in and do that shit. But mm-hmm. They got the money for it, dude. Yeah. Starting. Starting to get the money for it. Um, dude, Warner Brothers is not fucking hurting for money, bro. They own Harry Potter. They own fucking Jurassic Park. All that shit, dude. Like, they're they're fine. Yeah, you think so? They own DC, bro. Like, they, they, like, they have plenty of fucking money in there. <laughs> like, they just... It, I don't know. They just don't manage their fucking shit right, dude. If you gave me the properties that they had, I would put out a fucking so much content for that shit. It would be unreal. I think the problem is, is the the higher ups just have their too much control over the movies. They don't give the artist freedom enough freedom. And I'm sure it happens in more, more, uh, you know, more studios than they'll admit. But like probably. But this one, I feel that they like kind of gave creative control to whoever was like in charge of this. Like, just make your fucking movie. Like, oh, you talking about Kong versus Godzilla? For right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think they were just like, just do it. Like, they're two titans. Like, you're going to have an audience. It doesn't matter how shitty it is. You're going to get the numbers. So. Well, this movie sells itself because my, my nine-year-old son bothered me every single day until mm-hmm. we went and watched it. Really? Like, yeah. Like, exactly. He said, Dad, we have to go see Kong versus Godzilla. Mm-hmm. He even watched the old ass 1950 something one with the dudes in costumes fighting and shit because that's how much he wanted to watch it. Wow. He watched all those old Japanese dubs. That is awesome. Godzilla that is movies. molding him. You know, and I just I was like, you know what, son? Fuck yeah, we're going to go watch Kong versus Godzilla. Right. And like I said, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. So what do you rate it? <coughs> I'm going to give it a 6 9. A 6.9? 6. Yeah. Godzilla 2, if we did a review on that one, I'd have gave that bitch like an 8.5. 
Right, that is the best one. I love that one. Because the first Godzilla, it's like, where the fuck is Godzilla? Why the fuck is it so dark? Why can't I barely see anything? Yeah, I liked it because it felt... Why Brian Cranston off after 20 minutes? Yeah, that was a travesty. But I like the first one because it felt real. It felt yeah. like Godzilla was like really a part of this earth. Oh, the the first. Yeah, I was about to say the first one really focused on the human dynamic of it more like how fucking because I mean, people think like, oh, it's so cool watching a monster's fight. But they don't think about like if that was real, bro, we're fucked. Exactly. Getting stepped on and shit buildings falling over everywhere. It would right. Into the, the world, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> but then the third one, they don't even care. It's like, what yeah, by this ever? one, it's just like, bitch, you're not in the shelter. What are you doing? Right. Dude? Like, Can we just talk about how like technology has like oh my God. improved so much since yeah. like like in the beginning it was just like war like a regular army mm-hmm. and then by this one they're like fully teched out and these like little spaceships going to the center of the earth it's like how did technology come this far so it's fast been eight years they just yeah. don't care it is. it's just like we're really going for it and uh, i feel like they pulled some of it from the show if you i don't know if you ever watched the old godzilla cartoon no that's what they did it was like a family of scientists and they had a machine that they could call godzilla from the ocean and he would come fight whatever monster it was because they no matter where they were at there's always a monster following him <laughs> or that just shows up and they'd call godzilla and he'd just come up out the water and be like boop, 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 and he just boop, 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 he'd raise up out of it and he'd take kick some ass huh. but uh so a little bit of that. And that's what I thought they were leaning towards in the second one because they found the way to to call him and, and, and all that. But yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I didn't I didn't hate it by any means. Yeah, I didn't I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. I'm honestly yeah. it's fifty fifty for me. I'm like on the fence, like if you're in the mood for a dumb on a dumb monster movie, great. If you're in the mood for something with a great plot and it's story driven. No, don't watch it. No, go watch the second. This one. is definitely a shut your brain off and just enjoy the pretty colors movie. It's just fucking give me more of that. And right. Honestly, like the YouTube comps of all the fights in it will be better than the actual whole movie. I think so too. You'll cut out all the the. I, it'll be another six months before you know they stop taking it down and shit. But there people will have it. Yeah, they'll definitely. Have, they'll have the whole the whole thing. It'll be Godzilla, Kong one, two. You know the, the fight scenes and then and then the Mecha Godzilla and then at the end and then. That, that's really all you need. It's really only a 20 minute movie. And you know what I'm going to be honest with you, bro. If they made another one, I'd fucking go see it too. You oh, know what I mean? definitely. It's, it's this... one of those franchises. Yeah. It's kind of like um, uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah. No matter how many yeah. shitty Jurassic Parks they're going to put up, uh, put out, have I will go. Have you seen the trailer for the third Jurassic World? I don't think I have, no. Dude, it's, uh, it's, it's finally getting to where I've wanted a fucking Jurassic Park movie to go for 20 years. Where? The dinosaurs are taking over, bitch. Really? And, like, it's finally leading to that. Like, you see a fucking T-Rex standing in the middle of the street and shit. Like, pterodactyls are picking people off the fucking street. Like, it's it's finally getting to the to the dinosaur movie you want to see, which is, it's us or them, motherfucker. And which, I one, see... which one was it? Was it the third one that they brought the T-Rex to the... That's the second one. Second Lost one. Lost World, yeah. That's where I thought they were going with that one, mm-hmm. but they didn't... Fully commit well, to it. Well, they did a little bit. Yeah. Uh, them bringing the fucking Alpha Raptor or whatever and all that shit. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of where the second movie leads off, ends, mm-hmm. is, uh, uh, what's Steve, uh, I don't know why I can't think of his name. Steve Goldblum. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum? Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum kind of leads off at the end of the second one. Like, if we're not careful. These 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 animals were here before us, right? And they'll be here after us. And then you like see a T Rex standing on a fucking mountainside in like California, <laughs> you know, and see the pterodactyls flying over and shit. And like that's where the third one kind of picks up. Like, you know, the the dinosaurs are loose. What mm. are we gonna do? I yeah. see people holding fucking ARs, mowing down raptors and shit, <laughs> like the arcade game. <laughs> that's what I want. Like, I mean, like I said, they can make. As many shitty dinosaur movies as they want, I'm gonna go see it because For it's sure. fucking dinosaurs. Yeah, like and because I was fucking ten years old when fucking and the water's moving. Mm. Where's the goat? You know, like that right. will be with me forever, dude. Exactly. And so uh, good. That's the same vibes I get when I watch, and then I when I look over and I see my son, and he's just so enthralled, like it's the greatest thing he's ever seen. And that's how I felt when I was his age. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, movies like this, they'll always take my money because, you know, it's yeah. the kid in me, man. Exactly. Same. 
So that's like, why I, I love like, movies. Like I love my little artsy movies, but I love a dumb action movie too. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's just like that's that's fucking America, man. Like it's like a like like apple pie, dude. You know, what I mean? <laughs> right? Like we just we love our good action, our good dumb action movies, man. Um. So I saw you brought a movie, but I didn't really get a good look at it. What was that? Oh, bro, it's the one you've been uh, <coughs> asking for, man. Another fucking Ben Affleck movie? Yeah, bro, we're the Ben Affleck fan club oh, my podcast, God. bro. We're doing The Accountant. The Accountant? Yes, man, you're going to love it, dude. So much uh, so much good stuff. Because it's a Ben Affleck movie, I need to like <laughs> wait and see what I'm giving you. Because it's either going to be a death box or something good like this. Well, this Chino. is why I gave you The Accountant, because I was like, all right, Greg. You gave me a silly movie. I'm going to give you a Ben Affleck movie. <laughs> so I gave you this one. All right. I think you'll like it. It's it's different. I'm so sick of Ben Affleck movies. <laughs> <laughs> we went, dude, we took like a <coughs> we took like a two movie break. We we didn't have done Affleck. two movie break. We haven't done like Affleck in like three weeks. Bro. Right. We didn't see. We did this, and then uh, what we do the week before? We did Snyder Cut. We did a Snyder Cut episode. Oh shit, he's in that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I told you we can't get away from this man. We'll eventually run out of Ben Affleck movies. You think that. You think that. <laughs> it's a never-ending stream. He's still making more. <laughs> Actually, I bought a movie recently, Mandy. It's Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. It came out a few years ago. I heard about it. Like his daughter is a zombie or some shit. I don't remember. I don't maybe know. Maybe it's Maggie I'm thinking of. I haven't, right. I haven't seen it. I know it's just an art piece movie, mm. but it's Nick Cage. It is like... This is his new prime. Right. Like there you have like levels or not levels, but you have like um ages of Nick Cage and I'm thoroughly enjoying this age of Nick Cage. So we'll probably end up watching Mandy. All right. Because you're going to keep giving me Ben Affleck, I'm going to keep giving you Nick Cage, new Nick Cage. Damn it. Dude. Like <laughs> I would just kill for one good Nick Cage movie, dude. It, it's it's hurt me, bro, because I do love Nick Cage at the end of the day. Right. There's still more Nick Cage movies that I enjoy than that I don't enjoy. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Some of these are pretty bad. I know. <laughs> I didn't enjoy Willie's Wonderland as much as I wanted to. I know. I tried to. I tried. Yeah, you know same. what I'm saying? But I felt like we had more fun making fun of it than we did of actually than the movie was actually good. Yeah, same. Well, I'm hoping it's different with Mandy, but we'll see. I have heard people talk about that one though. Yeah, yeah. so it, it it might be better. It goes on a double feature with uh, Color Out of Space. Oh Jesus! So it's in that same vein. It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's a new Nick Cage movie. It is terrible, but in the best way possible. I want to find that one I was telling you about where he plays like a mob boss. Mm-hmm. He has like an '80s porn stash. Yeah. And they like dyed his mustache and his hair black, like like midnight black. Oh right, right, yeah. And he plays like a like a like either he owns like a strip club or he's like a small time like you know something or another. But like he's got like a Boston accent. And like I want to watch it. And I gotta find it. What it is? <laughs> we'll have to find it. We'll but now we have to like his four hundred discography. Exactly. You have to like go swimming through his fucking movie filmography. I'm, I wonder who's been in more movies, him or Sam Jackson. It's got to be Sam Jackson just because of how old he is. But I bet it's up. I bet it's close. The closer than we would think. Especially because he's like Nick Cage is coming out with like three movies a year now. Yeah, Sam, he was on that. Yeah. He, like I'd say from like 08 to 14, Sam Jackson was in was in three B movies a year. Yeah. And like one Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's kind of slower down, slowed it down in his older age. He you has, know? yeah. But Nick Cage is like. He's pumping it up. Yeah. He's, Desperate for money at this point. Like yeah. He has to be. I heard it was what you were saying. Like, he owes money, so that's why he does this stuff. But that sucks. But it's mo- it's fun. That's, I just learned to embrace it. Like, I'm just embracing it, and I'm having fun with new Nick Cage. So I want to see all these new movies. I wish somebody would just give him a shot at a real fucking movie again, bro. Honestly. Like, it's not that he's so terrible in these shitty movies, bro. Like, if anything, he's the only thing watchable in the fucking movie. Yeah. So, like, why wouldn't somebody that did work with him and had a great movie with him, like John Turtletab, you made two National Treasures and those bitches hit. Yep. They were not only uh, financially successful, but they were also fucking critically loved Mm. by most people. I love those fucking movies. Right. I don't necessarily need a third one. But give him a fucking shot. Give him a fucking a better movie to be a Jerry Brockheimer. How much money did that motherfucker make you on Con Air? Yeah, like, but I think I think Nick Cage doesn't have the pull that he used to 
He's more so for like our age group. Oh, and I didn't even think about that. He might have been like a fucking lunatic. Like people are like, oh, I can't deal with it again. Dude. Oh yeah, like, I can't work with that guy. I tried, man. That guy's just on some I've other shit. Heard, I've never heard that. I hear that he goes method as fuck. Oh yeah, I've heard that. And sometimes the director will be like, Yo, bro, I get it, but like you're going too far with this shit. Like I could see that maybe. Maybe, yeah. You know. And like, hey bro, like I get it that you're trying your best, but he like, probably is hard to work with when he gets in that like phase yeah. like hey bro i get you're trying your best but this movie's fucked yeah. you're not gonna be able to save it mm -hmm. and it ain't like you're jordan in this prime putting up 60 anymore dude you're you're your bench rotational player at best now <laughs> right like i just need you to to carry us but not don't don't go behind the back with it just put it off the backboard and put it in dude. yeah exactly that makes sense that probably but I still think, I mean, he may not be able to be the star anymore, but you could still give him a great, like, like how Michael Rooker is in, in the Guardians movies. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I think Nick Cage would be great at a role like that. Oh, like, definitely. You know, maybe he like won't Like a villain it. or a... Yeah, oh, dude, he would play a fantastic fucking villain in a movie, dude. Mm -hmm. Especially like a, a, a DC or an MCU movie. I think he would kill that shit. I don't know. He might be a little too method for that. DC, I think, would give him more leeway, mm -hmm. obviously, with Jared Leto they did and shit, but yeah. MCU, they'd be like, hey, bro, you really the play ball. Right, yeah, the fucking house. that's the thing you can't really like. That's what I love about Nick Cage. It's like hard to like tame him. Like He's either going to go for it or... Take yeah. me as I am or not at all, bro. Right. Sorry. Every time? I don't know why somebody from Ohio's calling me. Oh. But that's about all I have to say. What'd you say? The collector? The, collector. the movie we're doing next week. Oh, the accountant. The accountant. Yeah. Well, I guess next time we'll uh, be talking about the accountant whenever that'll be. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's what I said, man. I, I want us to, you know, man, I love this shit. I don't want to ever give it up. Oh no, we're not giving it up. It's just like schedules. But are... I do know that you're fucking human and you need sleep too. So right. It's just going to be tough, bro. But like, once I get it down to like you know we've got a better rotation with the kids because I'm still learning my shit now too. Yeah, Ashley's starting her new job. Oh it's, right, I did forget you're. Uh... It's it's throwing all my shit up too because now yeah. I'm like I'm I'm by myself for for some days. Oh, that's so. we'll work through it. We'll figure it out. But yeah, like if we could just like get it to where we could do afternoon episodes or something, that'd yeah. probably be the best. <laughs> yeah, because I. I work quote unquote night shift, but right. I get off at like one fifteen around that time. Right. So I come home, go to sleep and I'm usually up by like 10, 11. So, well, that's what I said. When I texted you this morning, I was like, I hope I didn't wake him up. Cause I knew you were going to be up late yeah. later. And, uh, I was like, well, hopefully you can get with me this afternoon. Cause I really wanted to do it. Cause I knew it'd be another couple of days before we get a chance at it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And now we got the, we got the double movie knocked out. That's awesome. Right. Thank y'all so much, man. That blew my, that made my fucking day, bro. Guyver with 800 views, bro. Right. Like, that's fucking awesome, bro. Yeah. We're starting to make our traction. I love places. it, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Make me start picking other movies other than a Ben Affleck movies. I know, sure right? It's getting more successful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Psycho Gorman and, uh, and Kong vs. Godzilla. Yep. Both swings and uh, they, they got on base. Yeah. Oh no, Psycho Goreman landed it for me, but oh, you Kong vs. Godzilla. Slam with that one for you, dude. Yep. I fucking love that movie. I like I said, I like Kong vs. Godzilla better, but not by much more. And it should I should like it a lot more. Yeah. Because I should budget, like it the budget alone, I should like it more. I should like it a lot more than I do, but I just I can't I can't. Just the nostalgia factor. I should it's like so weird, more. it's like it's like, hey, I just want a dumb monster movie, and then they give it to me and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't want it that dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, because it was all over the fucking place. But anyways, anyway, yeah, I gave it six nine. Oh yeah, but I guess we'll uh we'll pick up the account next time, right? Yep. See you then. Later, y'all.